what's going on folks this is clay with clay's ac and auto repair and accurate engines here in grand rapids michigan and if this video is helpful please consider subscribing and sending me them sweet old thumbs up and leaving them nice comments at the bottom if you've got a question and it's automotive related you can hit me up on clay's ac and auto repair on the facebook messenger i certainly try to answer them for my subscribers for free and it's much easier than answering the comments down below feel free to leave nice comments down there and remember if anyone else can do it you can do it too that i promise you now this that we're going to be working on today is a ford escape 3.0 this is going to be the same thing as the mercury mariner with the 3.0 this is going to cover all the years that have the 3.0 and should help you if you blew out a spark plug and then blew them threads out of there what a nightmare it seems like but i'm here to tell you it's not that bad you can do it i guarantee you just follow these instructions that i give you down here and if they're helpful at nighttime while you're sleeping turn on one of the clayway sweet playlists from my channel homepage. turn the volume down on that old computer let them play from front to back because that's how I make money on YouTube. It's only two tenths of a cent, but it's better than nothing. Okay, so back here and I've already took a bore scope and I looked down inside the holes and the threads are all gone. So we're gonna end up repairing this. So the kit that I'm gonna be using to repair this Ford 3.0 is going to be a 5.4 uh, three valve 4.6 three valve engine kit and it looks like this and now i've done this procedure already videos all shot all that stuff so i know that this works this worked really really well for the 3.0 i don't know why it's not marked on the instructions that it does but it certainly worked well in this situation i don't know the different kits that are out there to get this this was the one that i bought this was about a hundred dollars wasn't super cheap but i wanted to make sure that it was going to work if it was going to work i bought the more expensive kit to be able to do it okay so we're not gonna it's gonna look like a lot of stuff is here but we're not going to need a ton of stuff we're going to need our spark plug thread kit repair kit now this particular thread kit repair kit is for the ford triton 5.4 v8 4.6 v8 um, i'm pretty sure it's going to work in this application so that's why i'm using it if it doesn't work you won't ever see the video need a little light gonna need a screwdriver this is pretty important gonna need some grease that's extremely important gonna need a spark plug socket remover we're gonna need to remove the spark plug or insert a new spark plug ratchet now these things right here this is a fluid evacuator i'm going to use it to suck out the debris out of the hole once i get it done but you could also use a little vacuum cleaner and duct tape a smaller tube to the end of it and suck it out that way wet dry vac work really good in addition to all them things this would be helpful as well this is gray high temperature rtv the blue rtv may work you know in different colors but they recommend the gray because it's high temperature, so I'm gonna use that. It doesn't really specifically matter what brand you use. Now, before we get going, we need to make sure that our valves are in the right position and they're closed. We're gonna do that by making sure that our piston is down, which generally will indicate that the valves are closed so our tool doesn't run into it. We definitely don't want the piston up here like this. We want the piston down inside the barrel. If you're unsure about what I'm telling you, you can take a bore scope. They have many of them that attach right to your phone. So you can look down there and make sure that cylinder is all the way down. But I'm gonna show you how to do it with the screwdriver. Okay, so we need to remove the spark plug and coil. And like in this situation, it bit it pretty good. So we need to do that. And if your intake has to come off, you have to remove your intake. I got pretty good video on removing that. So I'll show you how to remove that in another video. And we're gonna need a screwdriver. Now. As you can tell, looking at this screwdriver, I'll give you something to measure it against. It's about that long. What I need to do is I need to remove the spark plug and then I need to stick the screwdriver in there. Now, when you're gonna feel it hit where the spark plug goes. Now, we need to go down much further than that. We need to make sure our piston's down, which in this situation, my piston is down. My spark, my screwdriver is actually hitting up against the hole right there and it's dropped all the way down. If it was not dropped down, and you'll know the difference 
or at least you should know the difference if you can't figure out the difference of when the piston's up and down by doing a couple simple tests, uh, you probably should let a professional do this for you. Um, but what you can do is you can hop in the car and even with the intake off, your spark plug coils disconnected and your fuel relay on fuel pump relay unplugged if you're worried about them types of things i'm not going to worry about that for hitting this car over because i'm just going to go like this with my key bink bink and i'm going to step out i'm going to stick my screwdriver in there and make sure my piston's not up now meaning you just get in the car hit it blink check it okay it's not down in the middle blink again what this does is it closes the valves inside the engine as i explained earlier then you make sure your screwdriver can drop down in there real well and that means your valve should be closed the other alternative which i don't like and i'm not going to do is remove the valve cover and you can make sure it's off the lobes that gets a little bit complicated for folks and don't quite understand that so this is the simplest way of doing it and you don't have anything to worry about it's not going to start up on you especially if you just unplugged all the coils it definitely ain't going to start up on you or with the intake off of there it shouldn't run anyways but it could possibly run because it'll still suck in air and be putting in fuel if your fuel injectors are plugged in etc etc so be mindful of that but we're going to get going and fix this spark plug hole Okay, so this is what your screwdriver is gonna do when the piston is up. I can't insert that very far in there. That's as far as I can go. But when I go to a piston that's down, I can insert it quite a bit and it'll go really far inside there. You can see the difference between this piston being up towards the top. You can't get much screwdriver in there at all. But when this piston's down at the bottom, you can get almost the whole length of the screwdriver in there. Well, I tried to use the borescope to show you guys this, but apparently they get rustled around quite a bit. So we're going to try. Okay, my borescope was broken, so I'm giving you guys a pretty nice shot. And you should be able to see threads there, but you can't. So that's why we're doing this. Grabbing the tap tool portion of our kit... We're gonna put this grease on every single groove on here so it'll catch the metal shavings as we cut into the new spark plug threads. Now taking out the extender tool out of our kit, we're gonna have that all greased up and we're gonna start cutting our new threads. Now we can quite simply drop that down inside the cylinder head and because of our gnarl being the same size hole, it lines up really, really well. Now the good thing about this particular tool is it fits in the barrel of the spark plug hole very straight so then it'll square up our hole so we don't have to worry about it going oblong now grabbing our 3 8 ratchet and probably a three or six inch extension we can put it on the inserter tool now i turned this about 10 times and it didn't feel like it's doing anything but then after a couple turns it started biting in there and could pretty much do it one-handed look at the depth of your socket as it goes down we're just cutting new threads and it should bottom out when it's done now you could crank this puppy down but when it gets real solid it's probably time to come back out. So we're gonna go ahead and remove this sucker out of here and take a look down inside there. The metal shavings, that's why we use the grease. So this is why we need to vacuum it out because we have a ton of metal shavings on there and we wanna get them out of there. Now, another way that you could get them chips out of there is you could put a bunch of grease on the end of your screwdriver, stick it down inside your hole. Hopefully, stick it down inside the hole, run it around, and potentially pull out some chips that way as well. 
had most of them cleaned out, but got a couple more. Do that a couple times. Should be able to get them chips out of there. Now, hopefully you guys can see that there's new threads cut inside there and we need to get ready to start cleaning this thing out. We can insert our new threads or we can clean it out first, whichever comes, you know, whichever you want, but eventually we're gonna have to suck all that stuff out of there. So once we vacuumed our metal shavings and stuff out of there, now we go ahead and we're gonna insert the new coil for our spark plug. Now this coil on the top of it has gnarls. So it's gonna go in down inside the cylinder like this and we're gonna use this portion of the tool to insert it and we'll screw this onto here properly, making sure that that's at the top. Then we'll insert that into our tool, screw this into the hole after we put the gray RTV on the outside of it. Now we've got our RTV inserted on there. We've got our hole cleaned out. Now we're gonna go insert our neural. Now here's my thoughts on not only if you can tell I haven't started threading that in yet, but my thoughts on the actual engine and what could happen. Right now, to fix this the exact right, 100% sure we're not gonna have any problems way is gonna require removing the cylinder head. My thought about that is, is this is an old vehicle, it's probably not worth the cost of removing a cylinder head. So we're trying to avoid doing that. What do you have before you started? Something that's no good and won't work. What is the possibility of having something that's no good and possibly won't work when you're done with this procedure? Probably a lot less. <laughs> so thinking about the metal shavings dropping down in there or worrying about that too much is probably futile because you've already got something that's junk now. So pay attention to where I have the level of my socket. I'm gonna screw it down in there and I'll show you the level of the socket once it's all the way inserted and then you'll know. I know it doesn't look a lot different, but we could definitely tell that we were tight with our ratchet because it becomes very, very hard to turn. I just snugged it up. Probably like 15 foot pounds would be what I would think, maybe even 25. Now I'm gonna try to remove the center portion of the gnarl without that adhering to my actual new threads that I put down inside there. So we'll see how that turns out. Now it should have turned for half a second, pretty tough, but then loosened up really quickly. Like you can tell that the two halves are separate. So more than likely we should be able to just pull this right up off of here. I'm gonna unscrew it most of the way by hand if at all possible. And I'm over screwing it a little bit because I want to make sure it's out of the threads. And as I screw, I'm going to pull up on it. So hopefully my, my inserter. Ah, the inserter came out with it. So that's great. And we don't have the threads on there. So that's even more awesome. Now for the last step. Now the last tool inside the box is this little thing. Now what this does is you stick it down in the end of here and you whack it once or twice with a hammer and it locks in the little gnarls, hopefully into the metal like it's supposed to. And then we wait a little while because we want our RTV to seal up and we insert our spark plug. Okay, so now we're gonna drop our socket down inside there like so and we're gonna give her a little tap and i'm gonna try to do this but i'm just gonna give it a, a sharp tap not super hard but not super soft either and drive that sucker down in there but i need two hands because i want to hold on to this right here but i think just about right now if you left it the way it was it'd probably be just fine this is a part of the kit and the way it's supposed to be done so i'm gonna do it when I was tapping this, it did feel like it was going down just a hair. You could barely feel it move, but it did feel like it moved or did something anyways. And Eureka. 
So we've got our new threads installed in there and we need to do a little bit more cleaning up inside there now, but she's looking good. Now I'm gonna go get a new spark plug boot for this and a new coil and a new spark plug and put that in there and see how she goes once we get the intake all back together. Okay, so if you have any concerns or doubts that one of your coils in the rear is not good after your spark plug blew out because the threads flew out of there, we can always remove one of the coils that are up in front that are very easy to change and put it in the back of there. Okay, so we've gotten everything tightened down. We got everything put back together and we double check our work before we go in, keeping our fingers crossed that nothing happened, which I'm quite certain it didn't because these are just aluminum shavings that would be dropping down on the cylinders. And hopefully if any of them got left in there, it's all good. So my suspicion is, is that this is gonna smoke a little bit when it starts up and it's gonna run a little bit rough for a couple moments, but all right, sounds good. Sounds good, sounds real good. Put our hand on the engine and it doesn't feel like it's misfiring. I don't hear the spark plug blowing out of there. Now the test is to take it out, drive it, get some pressure up in there and blows out the spark plug, you got big problems. I doubt that's gonna be the case in this situation or in your situation because if anyone else can do it, I know if I can do it, y'all can do it too. So let's take it out for a drive, see how she goes. So we got that old Ford Escape fixed up really, really good and it runs smooth as heck took it for a drive no spark plug blowing out of them holes remember if anyone else can do it you can do it too that i promise you if you've got a question for me and it's automotive related i can't help you with your baby mama drama but you can hit me up on clay's ac and auto repair on the facebook messenger and i'll certainly try to help you out remember at nighttime when you're going to sleep turn your computer on and open up that clayway playlist put one of my sweet long playlists on and let that sucker play from front to back god bless you folks i hope i helped you save some money you were able to get the job done